In the wake of the full FDA authorization of the Pfizer vaccine, companies that have for a long time said they would do this are now instituting new mandates of a variety of different forms. And there's gonna be a lot of these, but we wanna jump through a few of the early examples of this. So first of all, Carnival Cruise Lines has updated their COVID-19 protocols for people who are unvaccinated. In a statement shared on their website, the cruise line said unvaccinated people traveling on Florida, Texas, Louisiana, Alabama, and Maryland based ships will only be allowed to board if they have been exempt from the vaccine for medical reasons. So you will be expected to be vaccinated unless you're one of the very small number of people who cannot get the vaccine legitimately, or if you have a doctor that will write up a note saying you get to infect people. With the <laughs> if, you're, if you're one of those two groups, you're still gonna be okay. <laughs> um, and so starting on Saturday, August 28th, these passengers will be required to present a letter from the medical provider and an exemption approval letter from Carnival. The statement added that due to these new rules, all other vaccine exemptions previously granted for upcoming voyages will no longer um, be valid. So uh, considering that, you know, JR, before the pandemic, you could take 10 perfectly healthy people and put them on a cruise and like herpes and stuff would just naturally spring forth. These are fonts of disease. Uh, there have still been people with COVID getting on these cruise lines. It's been spreading like crazy. And so this is an effort to try to stop that. Yeah, I mean, I, I, honestly, I've never been on a cruise. So I don't know that they have to include in the weather report um, fronts of, was it herpes? <laughs> That was, that's uh, it, it has been known to happen. It's the buffets that do it, really. It's like we're approaching this unincorporated island. It's uh, full of herpes in the air. It just spreads. <laughs> so maybe you want to get into your cabins. Anyway, um, <laughs> so it's a typhus this is the thing. typhoon rolling in. I, I don't think, I don't know, maybe it's going to affect, but maybe it's just because I'm the paranoid type. And I don't think cruises are so necessary in my life ever, but even right now. To then jump on these, even as a vaccinated individual, because of course, as you mentioned, if you can get enough people that fake it or pull off some kind of doctor's note that doesn't exist, I'm not sure the level of of like a verification that Carnival Cruise Lines is going through to make sure that people really do have these excuses and exemptions. That's I my mean, first. I guess I, I agree. I guess anything is better than nothing. But look, we we know that there are doctors. And there are nurses who won't get vaccinated. There are presumably doctors who will be known far and wide. Come to me if you live in Mississippi and I'm gonna write up that you can do whatever you want. Oh, you're coughing in my face as I write this? I'm, I'm really not that concerned, here you go. I feel like that will still happen. And cruises are still a very dangerous proposition right now. But there are some people that, I mean, it's, I guess if you've bought enough tropical shirts, like you're invested, you gotta go on those cruises a couple times a year. I would love to do it at some point. I can wait. That's what I'll say. Uh, I don't know. It's I'm a little worried about it, but it's the thing is maybe again maybe it's enough of a preventative factor, or at least enough of a policy that people will think first and twice about whether or not they're gonna uh, try and forge this or make skirt the issue somehow. Cuz maybe it's not that important to the unvaccinated folks that are trying to get on these cruises, I don't know. But I, I would avoid it altogether. I, I think yeah. I think we can live another year or two without cruises. <laughs> not for the cruise lines, I get the cruise lines, they wanna make their money, fine. I mean like yeah. for people to wanna do it, I'm just not interested in it. Yeah, 100%. Um, by the way, a reminder, the first major COVID outbreak outside of China occurred on the Diamond Princess and was stuck at sea for several days. 700 people caught COVID and about seven died. And I believe was that the cruise ship that Trump was like, just leave them there. I don't, I don't want them to come on board because they'll, they'll mess up our numbers. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Those, those 700 cases would have really ruined your pristine <laughs> record. <laughs> anyway, um, okay. So uh, that's, that's a change with the cruise lines. Let's talk about another change. And this, this might be a little bit more controversial. I'm curious to see what you think about this. Uh -huh. So Delta is gonna be imposing a, not the variant, the, the airline, is gonna be imposing a $200 surcharge on unvaccinated employees in their healthcare plan. So they're gonna be requiring unvaccinated employees to get tested for COVID-19 each week and wear a mask in all indoor settings. Were you not already expecting this? The airline will also subject unvaccinated employees enrolled in the company's healthcare plan to a $200 monthly surcharge and revoke COVID-19 pay protection for those who are not vaccinated. Uh, they put out a statement saying, I know some of you may be taking a wait and see approach or waiting for full FDA approval. With this week's announcement that the FDA has granted full approval for the Pfizer vaccine, 
the time for you to get vaccinated is now. And so the weekly testing requirements, those will start on September 12th. The healthcare surcharge will take effect on November 1st. So there is like five weeks, no wait, nine, Jesus. It's like close to 10 weeks for you to get vaccinated before this goes into effect. So if you live in America, you're gonna have access in that time. What do you think about this? Is that a good decision? Yeah, you know, at first when I saw this, I was like, you know, they're coming down hard and it's up to the company to come down as hard as they want. And enough people that don't wanna deal with this surcharge, that's the big one to me, the surcharge on the healthcare stuff. Um, so who don't wanna deal with this surcharge may weed themselves out. So there's not actually any kind of conflict or we fired these employees because their lack of, <laughs> of, of owning up to the requirements now, now that it's been approved by the FDA. And then this morning in the meeting, Brett was saying that the $2 surcharge, this is, I'm gonna see, I'd have to find out more, but the $2 surcharge could be something that's trying to benefit you know, the company and then this healthcare company to make more money off of this and that and then pump this up because of that. But I mean, there's also, I guess they have plausible deniability on the fact that they're like, if you get sick, that costs more money. Yeah. Um, people going to the hospital, that's not free as we know in this country. Now, and what testing it, costs yeah. money. You have to test all the time. Now these, and who knows I can, how much can we regulate employees wearing masks in the times in every situation that they need to. That's one of those things that I'm just not sure how hard it can, how hard you can go that forward on it. So they're implementing these hardcore policies. And again, it's just he he planted some seeds of doubt in my head on that part. But I'd have to look further to see how that all can work out. And really, if that's a reasonable thing to add that $200 for that. Yeah. But as far as the pay for once you go out and get sick. That one was my first issue because what if somebody does get sick and maybe they were vaccinated or maybe they you know catch mm-hmm. it and that there's some breakthrough cases. So you have some of the gray area that could be a problem with this. Yeah, yeah. Look, I I don't know if the two hundred dollar thing is a reasonable amount. I I have no idea. And you know what I would prefer? I would prefer a situation where corporations don't have any room to be making sorts of decisions like this. And the way we get to that is getting everyone vaccinated so that the corporations don't have to be involved in this process at all. Right. Right. But right now they are. And so look, I I don't know if there's any one thing that's gonna get us to 100% vaccination. I think it's gonna be a lot of different incentives. Some benefits for being vaccinated, some penalties for not being vaccinated, some restrictions on what you can do or where you can travel. Um, I mean, we're we're back up to what, like 1500 people dying close to a day Mm. again, needlessly. (sighs) Anyway, it's so so you're you're kind of on board, you're 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 on the you're on the iron fist I, policy. I sure. I don't know exactly what the iron fist should look like, <laughs> but there has to be something. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, Delta, by the way, says that 75% of their workforce are already vaccinated, but they want to, of course, get that up to 100%. I mean, look, it's an airline. This is one of those areas where 75% is not good enough. 75% of the doctors in your hospital are being vaccinated. I'm not clapping for you. You could do it today. Honestly, I think, you know what? Kids love messing with people. We should just give every kid in the country 20 syringes filled with vaccine. Just let them run wild, just stabbing people. Honestly, they could get the country vaccinated in like a day. I once just had stabbing. a cast on my leg, and the little brother of my friend walked up and asked me what was wrong. And I was like, I hurt my leg. And he wound up and he kicked it as oh. hard as he could. That kid would have vaxxed me and everyone I knew. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> that kid's an adult now, and he can. He's probably working for this strong-armed Biden administration. I bet he's there. Probably that kid, Stephen Miller. For more political news breakdowns, interviews, stories of activism, and me trying my hardest to care about the occasional big celebrity news story, subscribe to our YouTube channel at YouTube.com/slash/The Damage Report, and you can ring the bell wherever it is so you don't miss anything.